Hi, this is Professor Danilo, and in this lesson we are going to learn management tools and resources for production and process. This is going to be our agenda for today. Uh, first, we are going to analyze the production management fundamentals, all the key concepts that you need to know. After, I'm going to share with you a couple of productivity and tools. And uh, we also uh, are going to analyze customer relationship. And in the end, we are going to analyze endo marketing, which is tools about communication that we can use in order to improve our relationship between production and sales and supply chain. If you are ready, let's do it. The first module, we are going to learn the fundamentals of production management, all the key concepts that are mandatory for anybody who intends to work with production management. Production management is a concept related to transforming materials into goods, but when we uh, insert concepts related to management, and that's why we are calling it production management. We are talking about everything that is, real, uh, is needed to uh, make our production. Uh, how can I explain this? Uh, to make our production works uh, well. Okay, our factory works well. In other words, we are talking about everything related to planning, organizing, directing, and controlling the production process. The formal definition according to Yale uh, branch uh, is production management is the process of effective planning and regulating the operations of that section of an enterprise which is responsible for the actual transformation of materials into finished products or finished goods. We have four different functions uh, of uh, production management. They are designing and developing uh, and development of a production process, production planning and control, implementation of the plan and related activities to produce the desired output, administration and coordination of the activities of various components of and departments responsible for producing the necessary goods and services. The scope of it is related to all the activities and acquisition of land, construction, building, uh, procuring and installing machinery, purchasing and storing raw materials, and converting them into saleable products or saleable products or pro goods. Okay? We need to remember that all the production planning and control methods, uh, improvement and work uh, simplification uh, are related to production management, is uh, under the scope of it. Now moving on to process management. Process is the interaction between production and all the activities uh, covered by, um, by production management. This process, they are uh, interrelated tasks and activities that produce a specific product or service for a customer. Okay, so you have to use a set of skills such as process observation and wasted identification and elimination that can help you to improve your process to better meet the customer's needs. Now, after we've learned uh, all the concepts related to project management, we are going to move to uh, productivity and its tools. The first tool, which is the base for lean manufacturing, 
is related to the seven wastes. We have to identify them and eliminate them or reduce them uh, in our process. They are, the seven wastes are overproduction, transportation, defects, waiting, excessive, excessive uh, inventory, excessive motion, and excessive processing. Here you have an example of each one of the seven wastes and the implication of it. For example, the products with defect. An example, ports uh, incorrect for suppliers or incomplete information. Their implication are rework, scrap, warranty and customer complaints. Here you can read all of the other uh, examples of wastes or you can take a look at our slides, the material that I have posted for you. Now we are going to move on to the T-Map 2. T-Map is a well-defined uh, tool to organize problems and questions. In other words, you're going to organize all your uh, hypotheses, the needed tools to answer questions, the data to be collected, the needed knowledge, decisions to be taken, obstacles, and what is known and not known inside the process. The steps to create a T-Map are Analyze the project charter. This is the first one. List what you know and don't know about it. List the main questions to be answered. Group and sequence all questions. Identify all methods and tools to be used in order to answer these questions and in the end develop the action plan in order to solve all these uh, problems. This is a picture of a typical team map where you can identify the flow and the extra tools in order to uh, use the team map process, the team map tool. Moving on, we have the SIPOC. The SIPOC is the tool we use to uh, identify the inputs and outputs of the process from the suppliers to the customers and the process that you use to transform the output into out, uh, the input into output. Okay? You have to uh, analyze everything related to this in order to serve better your customers and also to identify uh, visually the documents, the business process from the beginning to the end. This is an example of a SIPOC method where you have all the uh, activities necessary from the input, from the suppliers that are going to give you the inputs you need. You are going to process these inputs. You are going to uh, transform them into outputs. And in the end, you are going to find your finished goods to your customers. You are going to deliver them to your customers. Now, we are going to discuss a little bit about the FIMIA or FMIA. The FMIA is a tool we use to mitigate, actually to understand first and after to mitigate risks, the main risks we have in our project or in our process. There is a nine-step process for completing an FMIA. The steps uh, should be completed by a cross-functional team that is responsible uh, for the end-to-end -end process. In other words, you need to identify the best, uh, the best employees or the key employees involved in this process, the specialists, in order to give you a better overview to map your risks and ideas on how to mitigate them or to eliminate them. Here you have a picture on how you can 
map these risks and give uh, uh, recommendations and uh, transfer these recommendations to the, the responsibles and actions taken to achieve this uh, objective, mitigate or eliminate risks. Since this is not a Lean or Six Sigma course, we are going to uh, only know the concepts. We are not going to know how to apply them. But here I posted for you a couple of uses of FEMIA on how to use it, when to use it, the critical factors for the success to implement uh, FEMIA, the main purpose of it, so the, the questions that FEMIA can answer, and the expected outcomes of, the, uh, of a FEMIA implementation. Okay. So here you have a couple of concepts that you don't know. It's just as a curiosity. But if you uh, have the intention to work with production manager, uh, management, I truly recommend you to go deeper into this too and study it, try to implement it, practice it a lot because it is really important. It is fundamental uh, in production and process management. Moving on, we have standardized work. Standardized work is a tool that is going to teach all your employees on how uh, or on who, what, when, where, why, and how the work is to be performed. So it is a, a document, an instrument document, a work instrument document that uh, the, pr the production manager needs to develop in order to guide all the employees or the operators, the blue collar, blue collars, on how they are going to conduct their activities. It is mandatory if you want to create st uh, stability uh, for your process. And with this, you're going to avoid mistakes, avoid scraps, avoid uh, incoherences in your uh, process. It helps you to create a foundation for continuous improvement too. So the process should be first of all uh, stabilized and then standardized. One process uh, standard is a good way to create improvements. The basis of standardized work are defines the content, sequence, timing, and an outcome of work processes. It breaks the work into smaller uh, elements. It balanced work content in a flow process to meet customer uh, demand. And finally, for standardized work, uh, the work must be repeatable, must be reliable, and quality issues must be at a minimum. This is an example um, from a big company, a big multinational, on how to create your uh, standard work uh, or your standard operation, uh, operations uh, sheet, which is the same as standard work. You have some pictures here to conduct the employee uh, on how to uh, better manage the activities. You have a list of activities and a list of guidance on how they need or they must to conduct their process. This is another uh, example on how you are going to uh, standardize your activity. You can use different types of tools. And here I have posted for you, I have mentioned for you, a couple of tools such as 5S, the basic part, visual management with boards, the TPM or total productive maintenance related to the maintenance of your equipment or of your machinery, variation reduction using Six Sigma concepts, and the RPS or rapid, rapid problem solving, which is a tool 
uh, that you apply to fastly solve problems, punctual problems that you face, that you've, uh, you can face in your production line. As I have mentioned before, visual management is one of the most powerful tools we have in order to standardize our activities and with this better manage our production and process. So visual management uh, is um, an, um, a tool that is going to show us with pictures, with images, uh, Oh, who, what, when, where, why, and how we are gonna, uh, we can manage our process, uh, our production line. Okay? It's not only used for production line, but for management in general, but it is totally applicable into this, uh, these conditions. So, uh, you are going to simplify, clarify, highlight, and separate all the activities, all the functions, or all the, the, the how can I say this, all the issues that may happen in your production line. And if they are uh, abnormal, you can fastly uh, eliminate them or properly attack using techniques, using the workplace to become, uh, to turn it into a safer place, uh, high quality place and highly productive environment. Here I have a couple of examples on how you can implement uh, visual management. Uh, you can use boards, you can use colors, you can use pictures, you can use flags, you can use uh, some wallets, standardized wallets, in order to organize the tools of the operators. And this is how you can uh, better organize your uh, production line through visual management. Visual management is also identified through three different uh, parts. The first one is the board of communication. The second one is the workplace indicators. And the last one is the management uh, control. The first one uh, is linked to metrics, objectives, uh, results, problems, improvements, and the mission statement. Workplace indicators are related to identify territory, resources and products, the team, floor makings, two, and rack makings. And the last one, management controls are made by the SOS or standard operating sheet, process monitoring, schedules, inventory identification, equipment monitoring, uh, SPC and charts, and undumps. All of them are practical tools or strategies that you have to use if you want to create visual management environment. Moving now to one of the most important tools we have related to production management, we have the VSM or value stream mapping. The value stream mapping is used to identify the most impactful uh, improvements for our process or systems the actions needed to implement those improvements and uh, to drive continuous improvement over time. The value stream mapping or VSM process gives us uh, a structured way to understand the current process, identify the key opportunities and develop an improvement plan. To create your VSM, you have to know that we have three different VSMs needed to be created. The actual state, which is the one you see in the picture, the ideal or utopic state, and the future state. The actual state, you are going to map all the process you have actually in your production line nowadays. 
So you are gonna map, you are gonna join all the, your team, all the team members uh, that are key for the process, and you are gonna define, not define, but uh, well describe all the process that are actual, that are uh, that are uh, used nowadays, that are in process nowadays. You have standard signals that you are gonna use in order to better describe this. You have triangles, you have squares, you have rectangles, you have some different signs, and all of them are standardized in order to uh, better describe your production line. Okay? One important uh, ratio that you are gonna uh, find in the end of this uh, mapping is the, life, the, the cycle time. So from the beginning to the end of the process, you will know exactly how many days or how long it takes to be completed. This is the future state map where you are going to apply all the improvements, uh, all the tools necessary to improve your process. The future state is the the is in the middle of the process after you identify the ideal uh, process you have to achieve it and to do this you need to uh, use the future state which are um, different states uh, in the middle where you're gonna apply improvements on it so from the beginning to the end you have different types of improvements when you complete it, when you finish it, you're gonna uh, identify your first, second, third future state until you get close to your ideal state. Okay, so after we conclude the tools of production and process management, we need to move to the one of the main points of conflict which is production against sales and supply chain departments. So let's take a look at this customer relationship, this internal customer relationship. When we talk about supply chain management, we are dealing with uh, a lot of different activities, uh, support activities, that compose this process, such as warehousing, logistics, uh, receiving, shipping, and many other different types of activities. Supply chain department is, uh, is the, one of the main uh, departments that is going to deal with production line. Uh, that's why uh, we have a lot of conflicts between these two different departments, these two different functions. And there are a couple of possibilities uh, of this con conflict, such as uh, inflexibility of production schedules, lack of communication, non-aligned goals between them. Okay, so with this, we can cause uh, conflicts between these two different departments. In the other hand, we have the sales department. The sales department is responsible for all the revenue of the company. So uh, this is one of the main points of conflict between these two different departments because in general sales prioritize revenue. In the other hand, the production line prioritizes the cost of the product, uh, cost reduction. So this can cause a lot of uh, trouble between these two different departments, right? In this case, uh, I have to tell you that each department uh, has different focus. So, as I have said before, cost is the prior uh, the, the priority of uh, manufacturing department and for sales department it is revenue so they need to sell more and more 
even though the production line sometimes doesn't have uh, capability to achieve these goals, to deliver all these products or services. That's why it may cause uh, one point of disagreement between these two different departments. And also there is another uh, common conflict issue uh, that is caused by different salaries, salary ranges. So when we go to the sales department in general, most of them have higher salaries than production operators. And sometimes uh, the sales department receives bonus for achieving uh, targets during the year. And in the other hand, the production operators don't have this type of bonus. So sometimes uh, the sales professionals intend to improve the capab uh, improve capability to deliver more and more. They promise to the customers some uh, short uh, delivery time. But in the other hand, we have because they want to achieve their, uh, their goals in order to receive bonus. In the other hand, we have the operators, the production line operators. They don't have bonus. They prefer to work uh, in a more standard way. They don't like to do overtime all the time, so it causes a lot of conflicts between them because the sales intend to get revenue. In the other hand, the operators are not going to gain anything else if they work more, so they kind of don't want to do it, right? That's one of the main issues that I, could, that I can mention for you. Another common issue between the two departments is related to the uh, planning of uh, production. So, as I have said before, sales is always searching for a more sales, more revenue. And sometimes the operators are overloaded and they don't have enough time to deliver how sales department has promised to the customers. So, it may cause an instability between the, the communication of these two, between these two departments, this, between these two different departments. And uh, uh, to avoid this, uh, you have to, the sales department has to inform the operations uh, or the manufacturing department. Uh, uh, they, they need to keep uh, these operators, this department, abreast of the situation as soon as possible. Uh, in order to plan better the, the, the workload, to plan better overtime uh, schedule and things like that. It, it, uh, it, may be, uh, it might be really helpful for the relationship between the two departments. Another common problem that we identify between sales, supply chain and production line is related to raw material. Sometimes it is listed in the production list as some products that can be delivered uh, right on time for the customer. But there are situations where you need to import, for example, raw, raw material from other countries because you don't have enough uh, inventory in your plant. And uh, if you don't inform, if the production line doesn't inform the sales department and uh, obviously if the supply chain department doesn't inform these two other departments, you may have, you may face problems to deliver your product to the customer because it was informed in the, the software, for example, or in a standard document that you can deliver right on time that product, that, line, that product line. But at that moment specifically, you don't have enough raw material to produce it. So you need to import and then it takes longer than it's supposed to be, according to the local uh, 
information. This is another common problem that uh, companies face regarding supply chain management, sales management and manufacturing uh, management. And to conclude this part, uh, the last common point of conflict that we can face between sales department and production line is regarding uh, quality issues. So uh, sometimes the sales department is going to sell the perfect product or service to the customer. Yeah, it's going to fit perfectly to your needs. But on the other hand, uh, the production line knows that there are some quality issues that should be punctuated to the customer in order to uh, not frustrate the customer that is going to receive that product. And also another uh, point of conflict here is related to the lack of information between or lack of communication between this department, supply chain, sales and production line. The lack of communication uh, is a real problem and maybe one of the top top three uh, prob problems that you are going to find inside companies that could be uh, solved through uh, training sessions or workshops between them to align the information to improve the communication process between them in order to achieve better results okay so that's all for this module now we are going to moving on to the end of marketing apply it for production line Endomarketing is a typical concept used inside marketing uh, fundamentals. But here we are going to use this concept in order to solve points of conflict between supply chain uh, department, sales department and production line. Okay, so here we are going to use this concept as a tool to solve conflicts. Okay, basically, endomarketing is, uh, is related to, in a few words, it's a tool that we use to improve communication uh, skills or communication processes between different entities. In our case, we are going to use endomarketing as a strategy to improve communication between supply chain, uh, sales, and manufacturing uh, departments okay so it allows us to develop and correct implement uh, plans and strategies to achieve better results in the, uh, the deliverables of each uh, of these departments in the as a conclusion they are going to uh, be more aligned between them the communication is going to be much better and the results of it are going to be amazing for the company. With this said, now I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you 12 different points of attention or strategies that you can use in order to achieve a better communication between uh, sales, supply chain and production line. With this, I hope you uh, have a better comprehension on how important endomarketing is to promote the healthy, uh, the healthy environment, a healthy environment for all the employees and all the, uh, the all people involved in it. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of them. The first one, uh, the first problem that you're going to find is that there are some teams that they are sometimes under lead and sometimes over managed. Uh, in other words, people, uh, the, the leaders that are supposed to guide them to, uh, to support the teams, sometimes they don't do it. And it, it, is, reflect, it is reflected in the 
in the performance evaluation each year. So if you don't have teams with good performance management, you are not going to have good teams in order to deliver what you need. Okay? The second one is related to culture, but culture in an effective way, such as you have to give to provide guidelines for all the employees in order to drive the team performance. Okay? The third one is the team building. It's related on how you build, how leaders build their teams. And it starts uh, from the very beginning when you are hiring people. So you need to identify the best talent, uh, talented uh, professionals to join your team. With this, you are going to build a good team. Uh, cadence and consistency is related to cre the creation of regular standards and schedules. With rules, uh, employees knows, uh, know exactly where to go. The number five is indicators, KPIs. You need to measure if you want to know where to go. So if you don't measure what you uh, what you need, you cannot uh, manage better uh, your strategies in order to achieve the best results. So you need to create a visual management board with good KPIs, effective KPIs, in order to improve your communication strategy. For this part, the last one is manage the forward pipeline. Sometimes people just look at forecast, which is uh, historical data. But we also need to manage pipeline because it gives us a better comprehension about the future. So pipeline is focused on the future development of sales in general or of, uh, of the thing you intend to. And forecast is focused in the past data. The tip number seven is related to the process itself. Uh, sometimes the process is so complex, so confused, that uh, it ties uh, the employee's hands. So they don't know where to go, they are totally locked, they don't have uh, ideas to improve anything because they are totally uh, blocked by the policies, by the procedures, by the, uh, uh, all the rules you have inside your company or inside your department. The number H is a concept from HR, which is coaching, coaching. This concept is related to how the leader can build confidence and drive production for, their, for his or her team through short conversations, short sessions, to, um, not to give the answers to the employee, but to make the employee think about the best strategies or the best way to solve a problem by themselves. Okay, it's a, it's a tool that gives to the employee the accountability and the responsibility of the process. Okay, so moving on now, uh, herding cats. This is an expression we use when we want to, to talk about uh, reward and motivation. Uh, it maximizes uh, the performance and minimizes conflicts because you create a, a positive environment for all your team, okay, or your teams. Leading indicators, uh, it means uh, effective uh, managers are always thinking ahead. So we need to uh, pay attention at the best, of course, we need to analyze data, but we also need to look to the future. We need to uh, analyze new possibilities. We always need to be one step forward. Okay? Number 11 
is protect the team itself so with good management habits with uh, good communication awarding them uh, motivating them or giving them reasons why they need to be motivated okay and the last one the last but not the least is celebrate we need to celebrate the celebration so every time you have a good achievement good results good goals uh, not good goals but when you achieve these goals when you target your goals it's good to celebrate because it creates uh, an environment of recognition an environment of uh, teamwork so it is uh, it is mandatory to have celebration inside your uh, your department or between your main departments when you achieve when you target uh, a good milestone or a good result in your process okay guys with this we conclude this training related to production management and process concepts i hope you liked it and if you have any questions just send me messages i will be proud to answer all these questions for you and if you want to go deeper into the subject just come to me and i will give you i will provide provide to you uh, many other resources or possibilities in order to uh, prepare you for the future remember one step forward so look at the future uh, pay attention to the future and uh, if you want to work with it just tell me i will be really happy to share with you what i know okay and i see you in the next module bye guys